Today I am going to perform RBC count. Hi everyone, I am Manoranjan Burman. Do you know RBC means red blood cells, which are also known as erythrocyte? I am going to perform this test using hemocytometer, which is also known as new birth chamber. This is a foundational lab skills in hematology. Let's talk about the principle of RBC count. Red blood cells are counted using a specialized chamber called new birth chamber. We dilute a small amount of blood with RBC diluting fluid that prevents clotting and lysis of white blood cells. Then count the RBCs under a microscope in a defined grid area. The total RBC count is calculated using a formula based on the dilution and volume. Materials required to perform RBC count. To perform RBC count, we need newer chamber, which is also known as hemocytometer, we need cover glass to place on top of the new birth chamber. We need RBC pipette which has 0 0.5, 1 and 101 mark on it. The RBC pipette has one red color ball within the bulb that helps to mix the blood sample with the diluting fluid. We need cotton to wipe outside the RBC pipette to remove the excess blood. We need EDTA blood sample. Since this test requires 20 microliter of blood, capillary blood from finger prick can also be used. We need RBC diluting fluid to dilute the blood sample. Hames fluid and Dacis fluid can be used. Filter the diluting fluid with the filter paper to prevent any dust particles. Finally, we need a microscope to count the red blood cells. Now let's talk about the procedure. At first, keep the new birth chamber ready by placing a cover glass on top of it. Take the EDTA blood sample and mix it. Take a clean RBC pipette and transfer the blood up to 0.5 mark of the RBC pipette. Wipe outside the RBC pipette to remove extra blood. Here at this point, some students face difficulty to fill the blood exactly at 0.5. For them, I am giving a tip. Draw blood sample beyond the 0.5 mark in the RBC pipette. After that, take some cotton and gently touch the tip of the RBC pipette and remove to adjust the blood at 0.5 mark. When you touch the tip of the RBC pipette with cotton, then because of the capillary action, cotton will absorb some of the blood and you can adjust the blood till 0.5 mark. Then draw RBC diluting fluid up to 101 mark of the pipette and you have to mix the blood and the diluting fluid properly by rolling the pipette horizontally for 1-2 to two minutes to ensure even distribution. Discard the first few drops and then charge the new birth chamber by transferring a drop of mixture under the cover sleeve. Be careful, ensure that the chamber is not overcharged, just enough to fill under the cover sleeve. Wait for 1-2 to two minutes and let the cell settle down. Focus under the microscope and count the RBCs in the 5 small squares, those are within the central large square. I am highlighting the 5 small square with red color so that you can understand clearly. There are few points which you have to remember. While focusing the new birth chamber under a microscope, you have to keep the condenser lens down, diaphragm is slightly open with low illumination to reduce the light. Otherwise, the lines of the new birth chambers are not visible. After counting the cells under microscope, you can use this formula to get the results. RBC counts cells per cubic millimeter is equal n into dilution divided by area counted into depth, where n is equal number of red blood cells counted under microscope, dilution is 200 for RBC count, area counted is 0.2 millimeter square for RBC count. Depth is 0.1 mm for new birth chamber. Now you might have questioned that, how is dilution 200? Let's have a look at the RBC pipette. We have drawn blood up to 0.5 mark and then diluting fluid up to 101 mark. If we will take the ratio between the blood and the diluting fluid, then 0.5 is to 101. If we we'll make calculation to get the ratio, the ratio comes out to be 1 is to 202 but the calculation seems to be correct actually it is not correct just have a look at the RBC pipette after taking the diluting fluid into the pipette 
the blood will move into the bulb and it will get mixed with the diluting fluid. The first part of the pipette will hold only the diluting fluid, not the blood. So we have to eliminate that part from the calculation also, since it is not mixing with the blood. If we rewrite the ratio, then blood is to diluting fluid is equal to 0.5 by 100. We will do a calculation to get the ratio. The ratio comes out to 1 is to 200. Hence the dilution factor is 200. If you want to know about the area counted, there is a separate video in my channel. So you can refer to it. I will add the link in the description below. You might have think how depth comes out to 0.1 millimeter. The depth refers to the vertical distance between the bottom of the counting grid and the bottom of the cover slip placed on the chamber. If you are using Newbers chamber, the depth is always 0.1 millimeter. This fixed depth is crucial because it defines the volume of the fluid that is present over the grid area during the cell counting. Now, if we rewrite the RBC count formula by using all the predetermined constants such as dilution factor, area counted and depth, only the n which is the number of cells counted will remain as variable. Then the formula becomes RBC count cells per cubic mm is equal n into dilution divided by area counted into depth then is equal n into the dilution is 200 so we are multiplying by 200 area counted is 0 0.2 so we are dividing it by 0 0.2 millimeter square into depth where depth is 0 0.1 millimeter so so after the calculation it comes out that n the numbers of cell counted into 10,000 per cubic millimeter. After counting your red blood cells under the microscope, just multiply that number with 10,000, then that will be your result. The unit for RBC count is expressed as million per cubic millimeter. Normal reference range for male is 4.5 to 6.5 million per cubic millimeter. For female is 4 to 5.5 million per cubic millimeter. Sometimes you can express it as million per microliter also. Both are correct. If RBC count decreases than the normal range, it is known as anemia. Increase RBC count, then the normal range is known as polycythemia. Before conclusion, let's have a quick recap. We collected the blood, diluted the blood with diluting fluid, filled the Newbert chamber, counted the cells by using microscope, and use a standard formula to calculate the RBC count. That's all for today. Please like, share and comment. Those who are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.